Oh, hello there. Seymour Terrain here, world-class adventurer. My travels have taken me to fascinating places all over the world. Now today, I'm getting ready to take an exciting journey across several continents. Now I've almost finished mapping out my entire voyage. Come on, let me show you my travel coordinates. Behind these doors is the most advanced global mapping system on the planet. Follow me inside. Now, I'm going to start here at 43 degrees north latitude and 79 degrees west longitude. Now, my goal is to travel down to the 30th parallel and then across... Uh, excuse me, but I'm sensing that you're not quite sure what I mean by the 30th parallel. You don't understand what latitude is. Confused about longitude? Well, if you want to be a world-class adventurer, you have to be an expert in reading maps. And I'm just the person to help. Um, now we can start with the basics, and in just a short while, I guarantee you'll be able to look at any map and locate any place on Earth. Or my name isn't Seymour Terrain. Uh, let's begin by answering a very simple basic question. What is a map? Well, a map is really nothing more than an illustration or drawing of a place. And there are maps of every type of place you can imagine. There are maps of malls that show you where to find different stores. There are maps of amusement parks that tell you where to find different rides or places to eat. There are maps of cities and towns that help you to locate streets and parks. There are maps of entire countries that show where different cities and towns are located. There are maps of the entire world that show where countries, continents, and oceans are located. So, a map is a way of illustrating a place. We're going to concentrate on the maps of the Earth. The view that you usually see on the map is what the place would look like from up above. Let me show you what I mean. Here's footage of an area of land I recently flew over. Notice there are trees, a lake, roads, and buildings, too. Now, a map of this area would look something like this. Map makers use colors and symbols to clearly define the map. For example, the water is blue, the green area represents woods, the land is brown, the roads are gray, a park is represented by this tree symbol, the buildings are represented by squares and rectangles, Colors and symbols make it easier for people to locate places on a map. Another way to find places is to use directions. A magnetic compass is a simple way of finding the directions of north, south, east, and west. The needle of a compass always points to the magnetic north pole. On a map, north is usually at the top, south is at the bottom, east is to your right, and west is to your left. There are eight main directions of a compass. There's north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, northwest. We can use these directions to help us locate places on our map. For example, we can say that the lake is located in the northern part of the map, while the park is located in the southeast corner. To make locating places even more precise, map makers can add lines up and down and across the map to form little squares. The squares are called the map grid. Letters and numbers are used to name the squares. Here's how it works. Suppose I asked you to find the school building on this map, and I told you it was located in grid F6. All you have to do is find F and follow it up until you come to where F crosses 6. Now there's the school building. Now one of the other buildings is a restaurant. It's located in grid C2. Again, all you have to do is follow C up until it crosses with 2. There's the restaurant. 
Well, those are some map basics. You know what a map is and how to locate places on a map using colors, symbols, directions, and grids. Uh, we seem to be having a slight malfunction in the visual projection unit. Um, while I'm performing some minor repairs, why don't you practice some of your newfound map skills? We'll continue when you're ready. Well, so far we've learned that you can locate places on a map with symbols, colors, directions, and grids. Now let's talk about a different kind of a map. Not a flat one, but a round one. A globe. Because a globe is round, it's the only true way of showing the entire Earth. But just like a flat map, a globe uses colors and symbols. For example, oceans and lakes are blue. Land is green, brown, and orange. Globes also have an elaborate imaginary grid system that can be used to locate places, just like the other map grid we saw. The lines that go around the Earth are called lines of latitude. Lines of latitude go around the world from east to west. Latitude lines look like the rungs of a ladder. So think ladder, latitude. They're also called parallels. Now, the lines that go up and down are called lines of longitude. Lines of longitude run north and south from the North Pole to the South Pole. Think of long lines for longitude. Lines of longitude are also known as meridians. Now, latitude and longitude lines are measured in degrees. A degree is represented by a number plus this symbol. The line that runs around the middle of the Earth has a special name called the equator. It's located at zero degrees. Everything above the equator is called the northern hemisphere. Everything below the equator is called the southern hemisphere. The lines of latitude run from zero degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles. The lines above the equator in the northern hemisphere are called degrees north. The lines below the equator in the southern hemisphere are called degrees south. Lines of longitude are named in degrees too, and there's also a special line of longitude known as the prime meridian. It's located at zero degrees longitude. It runs through Greenwich, England. The prime meridian divides the Earth into hemispheres as well. The half of the Earth to the east of the prime meridian is called the eastern hemisphere. Everything to the west of the prime meridian is called the western hemisphere. The lines east of the prime meridian in the eastern hemisphere are called degrees east. The lines west of the prime meridian in the western hemisphere are called degrees west. Going east from the prime meridian, we see 15 degrees east, then 30 degrees east, and so on, until it reaches 180 degrees on the other side of the Earth. And we see the same thing going west from the prime meridian. 15 degrees west, 30 degrees west, and so on, until they reach 180 degrees. As you've probably noticed, eventually the two sets of lines meet at 180 degrees on the other side of the globe, opposite the prime meridian. This line of longitude is called the International Date Line. I'll explain more about that later. The network of latitude and longitude lines is also found on flat maps. But map makers have always had a problem drawing an accurate flat map of the world because the Earth is round and a map is flat. But they've developed a number of different ways to translate the round shape onto a flat surface. They're called map projections. There are many map projections. Let me show you three different ones. The first one is called an equal area projection. It divides the Earth into equal areas, but it creates distortions in the Earth's surfaces, especially near the edges of the map. Notice the longitude lines are curved. The second is called a polar projection map. The center of the map is the North or South Pole. Notice the lines of longitude are straight, while the latitude lines are circles. 
The third map is called a Mercator Projection. It gives an accurate view of the land near the equator, but the size of the land near the poles is distorted. But notice that both the latitude lines and longitude lines are straight. No matter what kind of map or globe you have, you can find any place on Earth by using latitude and longitude. Now, there's a special term we use when we give the location of a place in latitude and longitude numbers. It's called the coordinates. Here's how it works. Let's say we wanted to find the city located at these coordinates, 15 degrees south latitude and 60 degrees west longitude. First, let's start at the prime meridian, which is zero degrees. Then we have to go west till we find 60 degrees west longitude. And then to find 15 degrees south latitude, we'll start at the equator and go south. So we'll follow that down and find the city of Mato Grosso in the country of Brazil. I knew you could do it. Now, let's see what we can find if we go 60 degrees east longitude, which is east of the prime meridian, then move up from the equator because we want to find 45 degrees north latitude. And here it is, the Aral Sea. It's pretty easy to locate places anywhere on Earth using the coordinates of latitude and longitude. So, while I give the Global Navigation Chamber a chance to cool down, why don't you put your knowledge of latitude and longitude into practice? When you're finished, I'll be here to give you some final instructions. Now there are a few more things you have to know about latitude and longitude. On the globe and map we used, the lines of longitude and latitude were marked at every 15 degrees. But there are even more lines of latitude and longitude between those lines. For example, between 30 degrees north latitude and 45 degrees north latitude, there is 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and so on, up to 45 degrees and between 90 degrees west longitude and 105 degrees west longitude, there is 91 degrees, 92, 93, 94, and so on until you reach 105 degrees. By knowing the exact degree number, you can locate places even more precisely. For example, the starting position for my journey is precisely 43 degrees north latitude and 79 degrees west longitude, otherwise known as the town of Grand Island, New York. Now, there's one other set of imaginary lines that you might find on a map. These lines run north and south like lines of longitude and they divide the world into time zones. There are 24 time zones, each representing an hour of time. The first time zone is at the prime meridian, zero degrees. Remember, this line of longitude runs through Greenwich, England. So this time zone is called Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Time. Each time zone west of Greenwich Mean Time is one hour earlier. Each time zone east of Greenwich Mean Time is one hour later. Each time zone has its own name. If you go west from Greenwich Mean Time and pass through 12 time zones, you end up here. If you go east from Greenwich Mean Time and pass through 12 time zones, you also end up here. This line is called the International Date Line. This is where the time changes from one day to the next. There are seven time zones in the United States and Canada starting with Atlantic Standard Time Zone to the east and continuing to the Hawaiian Aleutian Standard Time Zone to the west, a difference of seven hours. By looking at this map, it's easy to figure out what time it is somewhere else. Speaking of time, I better get going. I finish mapping my trip and I've sent you a listing of all the coordinates of the places I'll be stopping. See if you can find them on a map or a globe. I know you can do it because now you have the skills to precisely locate any place, anywhere in the world. See ya.